good weekend all. I wrap Zena Blinder and Associates, and this is Friday, the 3rd of December, 2021, and this is your weekly metal market wrap up. Well, metals today were in the spotlight, up $21 in gold, 16 cents higher in the silver, copper still lower, platinum still lower, the dollar sort of mixed today. Energy markets, Eh, flat. They, they tried to stay up most of the day. In fact, they were up a couple of dollars and they gave it all up by the close. So not an awful lot there. Interest rate futures, well, we still have falling. It's hard to believe. Falling yields, as we know, tapering is going to happen and the Fed's talking of raising interest rates sooner rather than later, yet yields are falling. So if you think this is a fun week, you are so wrong. This was an exceptionally volatile week. Uh, Probably a lot of blood on the street, people trying to figure out which way should they be in the market because it has been a difficult one. You know, we keep hearing the word inflation, but gold can't seem to clear and make a run over that $1,800 an ounce area. Nothing you can say more about it. That's where it's at. We're going to look, and when we do this on a weekend, we start off with a monthly chart. And gold is clearly having trouble at the 18-month moving average of closes, the red line. That number is 1823.70. The support for the market has been the lower Bollinger Band, which you haven't even hit unless you go back into 2018. Isn't that amazing? You have hit the upper bands right into 2020, but this year you haven't. So you've been void of hitting those, and you've been really far away from the 100, I'm sorry, from the 100 month moving average, I almost said week, the 100 month and the 200 month. A lot of sideways action. You can't say that gold for the past year has gone really anywhere. It's just been whipping back and forth around that 18 month moving average of closes. Now on a weekly just close only chart, the market's gotten on the defensive again. When the market has a bullish bias, these numbers here will be over, just like they are there. It'll be over the 18-week average of closes. When it's under it, you get a bearish bias, and it managed to be under it this week. It's about $7 under it. When we take a look at just the bar chart, where now we're going to see the high and low of the week, well, you can see how the market petered out here. The 1870 area has slipped back into the low 1760 zone. In fact, 176060 was the low this week. We still have an existing pattern of higher lows and higher highs. Therefore, the short-term trend is up. Take out 1758.50, that is gone. Number two, the battleground seems to still be the 18-week average of closes in red, the 100-week. This is battleground zero. So in order for the market to be back to a bullish stance, you need to close over 1789.90 by weekend. That without taking out 1758.50. That would keep in play the higher lows, the higher highs. Number two, the market, if you look on this chart at Bollinger Bands, you've hit the upper Bollinger Bands on the weekly chart. And you've hit the lower bands on the weekly chart. It's very different than the monthly. So you've been traveling back and forth, and you can see that on, after hitting the last upper band, the market pulled back into the support area. That's how I view it. Momentum is working against the market. It is clearly pointing to the downside. The positive is when it was up this way, the market was getting overbought. It's no longer in that, but you need it to flatten out. And the only way it's going to flatten out is you get a bump in prices. Now, what would I think get initially the bulls excited? I say the bulls because it's easier to be bullish than bearish. Why? Even if you take out 1758.50, you'd have a straight drop. It's very hard to trade that. It's called a vertical price break. Where do you come in? If the market doesn't take that out, and this week's high of 1808 is taken out, traders will then say, ah, look what happened. Higher lows, higher highs. You still have the 18-week average over the 100, that's the theory, and price now is created this as another break low that's higher than that one. They get excited about that. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm giving you the what-if scenario. 
in the gold-silver ratio, this does not bode well for bull markets. Typically, bull markets get silver and gold going together. Right now, silver is racing ahead of gold. That is a bearish indication. Silver is not trending at all. The silver market has got a pattern of just follow the swings. That's why it's called a swing line study that I created, a higher high and a lower low. This is all taught in my charting course, by the way. And let me remind you, my Cyber Week special ends right now. So I'll show you what's going on, but it's coming to the end right now. I'm not extending it. Um, and as you look at how the market's got, you got downside momentum. The bias is down, you're not trending, and there should be big support just the way each time you've hit the Bollinger Band in the past, the support shows up at that number. So I don't think you're going to attract new selling. The question is, there's nothing friendly on the chart. In the copper market, you're starting to act bearish. I haven't said that word on a long-term copper chart in a while. See, down here, you were trying to base to do this. You did that move. Now, unfortunately, you have lower highs, lower lows. I'm in the bear camp now, and momentum down until you get back up and over last week's high of 450.05. I am looking for this market potential back to the 409 and a half zone. In the platinum, you've hit the downside target. You went right into the lower band uh, and the 200 week average. For me, that's enough. That could be good in the sense that one of the markets at least has just had this vertical price break from a Bollinger Band high to basically the low. Maybe it's exhausted itself. Last in the dollar index, strength. The dollar's winning by default. We're the country talking about raising interest rates. We still have the economy that is growing. Our Fed has taken a complete 180 degree shift. The word transitory doesn't exist according to Fed Chair Powell. It's not transitory inflation, it's inflation right now. He still expects the second part of 2022 to see a weakening of this inflation cycle, but how high does it go in the meantime? That he can't answer and hasn't answered. So on the pullbacks, I'm still expecting the dollar gets the bid. We'll see if that's correct. Buying over a Bollinger Band, if you, again, if you take my courses, I teach you never to do that. I believe that you never do that. So any of my research packages, a one-year basis one, qualifies you to get for free. My charting course, which is a $249.95 value, or my enhanced Bollinger Band course. You will learn all the different techniques that I have 50 hours worth of video in one course, quite a few hours in the enhanced Bollinger Band. It's not even a lot of hours. It's just a lot of good work in it, I got to tell you. And you really learn. That's the key to it. And then you apply it to your own thinking. So how do you get this? Because the plan's uh, one-year subscription starts at $156 for the futures, $159 for the Spider ETF. Not much price difference. We had a price and difference, so we saw them as they were coming through, and we easily knew what we were doing. You just take your cursor, move it up, click on the top here. You're going to get a link, an icon come up. Click on it. It explains everything for you, and away you go. I'll honor it. But I'm telling you, there'll be no more mails going out, nothing else mentioning this. It's basically over. Unfortunately, my staff will not be there to answer your questions this weekend. It is Friday night, and they won't return until Monday morning. You have a great day, and I will talk to you all come Monday.